obvious question. I mean, how did you feel Saturday night? It looked like in the second half it was painful at times. And then and, and how ha have you felt since from a recovery standpoint? Yeah, it felt good. It felt good for me to get out there, be with my teammates. That was the hardest part of being out. So just getting back and, and being able to get in the swing of things and, and find a little bit of rhythm was good. You know, uh, sometimes it hurts to play the game, just how it is. So I've been a little bit sore, but getting back this week and getting ready for next week too. No, no, probably not. I don't know. I, I, if I'm going to start something, I, I'm going to try to finish it. So uh, I anticipated playing the whole game and kind of ended up being like that. So, Cooper, just how tough was the last month, month and a half? Imagine it was not fun having to sit out. Uh, it was, it was, it was rough. You know, it, that was expected, though. I mean, it's, it's kind. I mean, we're student athletes. It's kind of like our whole thing. You know, playing football. It's basically kind of our whole life. So not being able to do what you love and, and what you've prepared for doing your whole life is, is going to be hard every time. Going off on that, Cooper, how hard was it to get keep conditioned with how fast you guys play and then get right back into the game like you we were talking about, how, how much time you got? It, it was tough. Um, just something that we kind of harped on in my recovery process was making sure that I do everything I can to stay conditioned and get ready for whenever I do come back and play making sure I was ready for the task at hand. So it, it was a big focus of ours, and I think we did a pretty good job. There was obviously a lot of weekly speculation. Could he go this week? When's he going to be able to go? When did you know you were healthy enough to play at the level you expect yourself to play at and be effective enough that you were going to go? When, when did you know? Earlier in the week, we have um, our padded practices, and – kind of the first day that I got out there in, in pads and did the whole thing. Um, felt pretty confident in myself, felt pretty comfortable in my shoes and, and where my feet were. So it probably earlier in the week, I, I found a good gauge of where I was at. Coop, kind of musical chairs filling in for you while you were out with Ollie and, and Dane Davis at times. What did you think of those guys? And then now that you're back and people are kind of getting back to where they normally are. What do you think the ceiling is for you as an offensive line together? Uh, the ceiling's really high. I think when we play together, we play pretty good football. And I think that was kind of shown this past week. I think we did a pretty good job, but got stuff to grow with. As far as Dana, Ali, and all the guys that, you know, stepped up when I was hurt, super proud of those guys. You know, they've, they've done a lot of great things around here, and that was just another one of them. And I think they filled their role pretty well. Cooper, coming off the bye week, you have two pretty tough defensive fronts waiting on you in A&M and, and Alabama. Just what's key this week and getting in the next week for the offensive line to keep growing? Uh, I think the biggest key is using this week to, you know, not as a week just to have a week off, really being intentional about how we're working and, you know, figuring out the game plan and figuring out the stuff that we need to do to win. Uh, kind of going back to Ollie, just kind of what was – that relationship like with him? Just, did he kind of lean on you at all during that while you were out? Uh, I, th I think so. You can ask him. I think he he leaned on me a little bit. Um, I think I think we all as a whole, you know, our whole line kind of bonded together around those guys that were filling in, building them up, giving them confidence. And then for me, anything that I saw that I that I knew that he might not have known, I showed it to him and figured out how he could get better at it. Obviously, you saw every week we're asking Coach, like, is Coop going to play this week? And when he would say he may play or we, I think he's going to play, how did you deal with the speculation and the pressure from the public about that? Uh, I just, you know, I just didn't really deal with it. I just kind of turned a blind eye to it, kind of turned my head. I, I, you can't really focus on what everybody's saying outside of the building, and that's preached by our coaching staff is that all that matters is right here in this building. So that's where my ears were listening, and that's where my eyes were looking at. So... It didn't really bother me too much. Did you get a lot of questions just out and about from just random people about it? Um, people, people would ask, yeah, but, you know, I, I'm not out too much. I'm pretty busy with football here, so not too much. Cooper, during the process from August and, and trying to work your way back, who, who, did you, who were some guys you maybe leaned on to kind of keep your spirits up and kind of keep pushing you to get back? Really, really my whole line, you know, that was big for me. And a, a huge part of it was my family, you know, after – after I had my surgery, I went home for a couple of days and, and hung out with my family. And, you know, they kind of nursed me back to health, health a little bit, my little brother. So, 
yeah, it was, it was my family, all of my teammates around here. Everybody's great. I love all of them guys. How was your little brother kind of helping you get, get back on track? Oh, man, you know, if – if anybody's ever had to deal with my surgery, it's, it's kind of hard to get up and get going. So he would always walk with me, hold my hand, you know, make sure I was propped up right and could get where I was going. Cooper, how fun is it to watch John Campbell and Javante Spragans on tape and, and then also just kind of watch them feed off of each other's energy? Really fun. You know, anytime those guys are out there hitting on all cylinders, it's going to be a fun game and, you know, a violent game. So. If you watch the game, there's plenty of finished plays and, and plays where guys are taking people over the pile, stuff like that. And I think that's kind of, you know, who we are as an O-line and who we're trying to be. It's our identity.